Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, that was a little more loud than I thought it was going to be. Welcome to the September 28th edition of the Washington County Public Affairs Forum. The Washington County Public Affairs Forum is one of those really rare and wonderful organizations that brings you information, sometimes whether you want to know it or not. We are interested in sharing information about issues going on in the community, and today we have a very profound issue. As a matter of fact, we'll all be voting on it soon. Our guests today are Sheriff Garrett and County, uh, uh, County DA Bob Herman. First, we're going to hear from Sheriff Garrett, who will tell us a little bit about the levy. Thank you, folks, and thank you guys for being here. Yes, I'm Pat Garrett with the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Uh, really by way of introduction, some brief history about the Washington County Public Safety Levy. Back in 2000, the Board of Commissioners decided after a lengthy study there were some components of the collective public safety services that the county provides that were uh, uh, in inadequate to, to properly keep neighborhoods and families safe. And as a result, uh, they crafted and put together a levy proposal for voters to shore up some of those services. And that levy was approved first in 2000 and has remained in existence continuously since that time. It's also important to remember that the Washington County Public Safety Local Option Levy funds justice services that serve the entire county, whether you live in an incorporated city, whether you live in the urban unincorporated area, or in our rural communities, uh, you receive services funded by the Public Safety Local Option Levy. So what are those services? Those services are, are, are pictured here uh, on the slide before you. The very first bullet says special enforcement teams. And so what we mean by that are our interagency crisis negotiations unit, for example. It provides the infrastructure and the supervision and some of the members for that, for that team. It provides, in a very similar way, support to our tactical negotiations team or our SWAT team, our crash accident reconstruction team, you may remember the horrific traffic crash here on Highway 8 and 185th. And that reconstruction team was out there for many, many hours, putting those, get, doing that early part of putting the pieces of that crash back together. It funds our, our mental health response team uh, as well, which we'll talk a bit about later. Um, and it provides 16% of all of the justice funding for Washington County. That is a significant proportion of justice services funding and to, to uh, ensure that core public safety services are adequately provided um, and also having the flexibility to be creative and innovate uh, in the example of uh, better serving the mentally ill folks that we have in our community with the mental health response team. And I'll just kind of walk you through an example of how those services are, are, are important and necessary for local public safety. Let's say a deputy sheriff or a Hillsborough police officer or a Beaverton police officer makes an arrest, and they take that person to jail. The levy funds a housing unit in our jail, so we're overcrowded. Uh, we've forced release 192 inmates as of yesterday, so far this year because of overcrowding. So the levy helps minimize early release of offenders due to overcrowding. And it also funds several prosecutors in the DA's office. So it helps ensure that we have enough attorneys in the DA's office to actually prosecute uh, crimes for which local officers and deputies make an arrest. And then once the offender transitions back out into the community, uh, levy funds help ensure that there are wraparound parole and probation services to give that offender the best chance to be successful back in the community and not wind up uh, back in custody. No, we don't want that. Um, and then there's some other services pictured on your slide here, which, which we'll cover in just a little greater detail here in a moment. And I'm going to turn it over to our district attorney, uh, Mr. Bob Herman, who will continue with the course. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, and I'd uh, 
re-emphasize uh, that this is a renewal levy, so we've had the benefit of these um, levy funds now since uh, 2000. It's been renewed, this is the third, it's been renewed three times uh, since the initial uh, levy proposal. And it also re-emphasized too, of course, I'm here from the district attorney's office, so <laughs> as the sheriff mentioned, um, uh, we have one jail in the county. A lot of times people think, well, I live in Beaverton, we must have a jail there. Well, no, there's, there's one jail in the county. Uh, and as the district attorney, uh, with the exception of some smaller uh, municipal courts, um, virtually all of the criminal acts that are uh, committed in the county, they come to my office. So. Uh, in a lot of ways, we don't recognize any um, city borders uh, as in prosecution services because whether you're, whether you're in Tiger, Tualatin, in the unincorporated area, whatever, wherever you may be, if a crime occurs, uh, that case comes to my office. And if you're a victim of a crime, uh, in addition, that case, uh, of course, comes to my office. And uh, one thing that's just statistically um, victims' rights have, have improved in our state in recent years. Um, uh, we had about 60, over 60,000 contacts with victims from uh, the folks in our district attorney's office um, this last year. Some of them were repeated contacts, so we may have been in touch with um, a theft victim or an assault victim more than once. But um, And so, uh, again, as, uh, as it's important to emphasize that um, there's one juvenile department, so all the cases involving uh, juveniles in the court system, whether they're delinquency by virtue of uh, bad behavior or whether they're what we call dependency, where the children need the resources of the court uh, because they've been neglected or abused or in some way uh, the court needs to take uh, some interaction to protect them. Parole and probation, the same thing. We've got one community correction center in the county, which is uh, kind of nationally renowned for the work it does. Um, serves as a work release center, also as a treatment dorm. And so community corrections, juvenile, the DA's office, the jail, they serve the entire county uh, with the services here. And so by way of a point of emphasis, um, this next slide talks about uh, the juvenile department. And it, as you'll see, um, the juvenile programs in Washington County have helped decrease juvenile crime four out of the last five years, uh, which may seem uh, kind of surprising in light of the news we hear about crime and juveniles' involvement in crime. Um, the only year that it didn't, it's about a, a eight, an eight-person difference. Uh, and so the levy funds help the juvenile department work towards um, their job of serving all the, uh, the juveniles uh, within Washington County. Um, I'm often asked, so I might be preempting a question that somebody will ask, but um, uh, in these presentations, levy presentations, um, they said, well, I've been asked, well, how, you know, what is it the juvenile department's doing? And my first answer is, well, I'm not exactly sure I'm not in the juvenile department. But, uh, yeah. but seriously, I uh, have a pretty good idea from the things that we see. One of the things that's of particular um, value, I think, to our, the citizens of our county is the juvenile counselors, there's five or six of them that have a presence in the middle schools in Washington, many of the middle schools in Washington County. I notice um, um, right over here at Mountain View is one of the schools uh, that they participate in. They reach out to about 300 kids who are typically identified as uh, perhaps at-risk kids or uh, kids in need of some, some help and some support. And their job is to keep them in the school, keep them away from crime. I try to get them the resources uh, needed so that they can be successful. And they've even dropped into the, uh, on occasion, into the elementary schools, uh, dealing with uh, gang affiliation and, and efforts to get kids uh, so they don't focus and look into gangs. And so they're, uh, um, again, they have that same support. Um, so I think it's that proactive work of the juvenile department that um, is a good example of one of the things that they do to. Um, keep these statistics down and keep the crime level dropping uh, for juveniles. The sheriff mentioned this, um, and he's, he's uh, more of the expert on this topic, but this is a big deal. Uh, this, this uh, the mental health response team in the sheriff's office, simplistically, it pairs a mental health clinician with a deputy sheriff and a patrol car. Uh, and they respond to calls involving uh, individuals with mental health issues. 
And as you can as you can see, it's kind of like the old uh, movie, um, Field of Dreams, that if you build it, they will come. And in um, 2013 to 2014, you can see the calls jump uh, more than doubled from 1,400 to over 3,000 calls. And in large part, um, that's due because that's due because of the fact that they went from one car to two cars. Um, so they doubled the ability to respond to these calls. And, and the value of this is uh, hard to measure. Um, individually, of course, for the individuals involved, it's of extreme value. For public safety, it's a value. It spreads across the system. Um, the, uh, the object is to handle, handle these cases uh, in a medical way as opposed to the traditional approach where when there's a crisis, someone's acting out, the police respond. Oftentimes, the, the only option is, a, is a, an arrest and to the jail, and then it gets involved in the criminal justice system. And here, the, here the object is uh, to uh, deal with it medically and, and, and get that person to other resources. In my opinion, it's my opinion, I guess I can exercise it as an elected official. <laughs> uh, mental health in Oregon, um, has been defunded since the 90s. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the criminal justice system is sometimes the default system for somebody in that situation. And this is one um, uh, example of um, uh, ways that the uh, public safety levy is helping to, to uh, change that uh, scenario. One other thing that the public levy uh, helps support are our shelters in Washington County. Um, and shelters that deal with victims of domestic violence. As you may know, we have five shelters in the county pictured here. One of them, the D Domestic Violence Resource Center, deals exclusively with victims of domestic violence. And, and uh, I hesitate because I didn't confirm the numbers, but I believe it's 32. It's 32 or 42 beds, all the beds um, available in the Domestic Violence Resource Center for victims of domestic violence. We process uh, close to a thousand or more cases of domestic violence in our office. Uh, the county is, I'm told, population now is about 575,000. So as you can well imagine, 32 or 42 beds is uh, uh, not enough. Uh, some of these other shelters are not strictly domestic violence shelters, but I know in talking to uh, those involved, um, they all deal with uh, folks that come through of their shelters um, as a result and in part because they're experiencing experiencing domestic violence and, and it's uh, created a need for their help. And so this levy, um, I know that, well, I guess it's a little farther away, the Good Neighbor Shelter, I was talking to the director uh, there the other day, 40% of the funding for the Good Neighbor Shelter comes from the law enforcement levy. And so traditionally, people don't necessarily think of law enforcement and, and, uh, and shelters, but in fact, um, it's a critical piece of, of uh, helping to deal with some of the, the problems that we have here in the, in the county. Want me to go? Okay, so, uh, and this is the dollar and cents. Um, usually before I get too far in the presentation, uh, somebody raises their hand and says, hey, wait, what's this gonna cost? Well, um, uh, so as I, as I, mentioned this is a renewal it's it's a renewed it's a five-year levy that will begin in july of 2016 we'll be voting on this uh in the november election this fall uh it renews the current levy that expired in 26 in june of, it will expire in june of 2016 and as i mentioned uh, the levy has been renewed a number of times it's a renewal levy because the rate of 42 cents per thousand assessed value remains unchanged and that's remained unchanged uh, since the year 2000. Um, first year cost for an average assessed value home, so again that's assessed value, not um, sell value, um, is about $107 per year, about $9 a month. And if you see down at the bottom, what is an average assessed home? It's about $255,000. Um, and as the sheriff said, um, it's about 16% of the um, of the entire public safety budget in Washington County. For my office, it's 18%, so it varies a little bit by department. So I think we're now available for, uh, for questions, uh, either one of us.
My name is uh, Bill Kroger. I'm a forum member. Thanks both of you for coming in. I uh, was a member of the uh, Washington County Behavioral Health Council for a few years, and I uh, was there when, when the mental health thing started up. I think it's a great idea. My question basically is I was wondering if you talk a little bit about your interchange with the police departments in Beaverton and Hillsborough and so on, and, and maybe give a few examples of that. Yeah, thank you uh, for the, the great question. Washington County has a very strong history of collaboration. Just uh, as this public safety local option levy is really supportive of that kind of collaboration, we know that um, if we make an arrest uh, from, a, from a criminal justice standpoint, that's gonna do no good if, if there aren't sufficient prosecution services and and parole probation services um, uh, in, in, in the end. And so that's one reason why this, this levy is representative of several different um, uh, services in the justice system. Uh, the same is true on the street where deputies and municipal police officers uh, work hard uh, day and night uh, to keep you safe. And I would start, the first example is the um, mental health response team. So it's a county right service. So whether we have a call in Tigard or Buxton or Beaverton, uh, that team's going to respond, uh, provided they're not already tied up on a call. Um, and uh, uh, we, we, you know, depending on which side of the street you're on, sometimes it can be, you know, Tigard uh, on one side, county in the street, and Beaverton on the other side. The necessity is we have to work very closely and cooperatively, and that's the kind of public safety services you have in Washington County. I mentioned earlier that this levy provides very important support to keep our crisis negotiations unit uh, effective and trained and equipped. That unit uh, has members from at least four local police agencies, Sheriff's Office, Beaverton, uh, Hillsborough, Tiger, as well as some negotiators from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So the partnerships that we have at the local level, they even extend uh, to our federal partners. So just day to day, kind of shoulder to shoulder, uh, we really do have a, a very uh, uh, wonderful collaborative environment that uh, is cause for celebration uh, really every day. Just briefly, that's a great question. And as I mentioned, as a DA, I you know, literally Kind of ignore boundaries because wherever the crime occurs in the county they come to us but i can tell you when we talked about the special enforcement teams uh, on the on the uh, crash here on tv highway we had two lawyers out there the other night to work with the officers there and um, major crimes team when we go out to a scene for a major crime typically a homicide uh, case perhaps an officer involved shooting um, uh, i i've been around a long time and so i but i don't know all the younger, the newer detectives uh, necessarily. And I literally, I have to ask sometimes, now what agency is that officer from? Because everybody works so well together. Um, it's, it, it truly is a collaborative effort where the man for the buck is uh, tremendous because um, um, the agencies put their egos at the door and, and uh, I think it serves us all real well as, a, as a citizens here in the county. Jim Cade, floor member. With the recent uh, state marijuana law changes, has there been any reduction in the county tax expenditures, or has there been any increase in the tax county I apologize. I'm probably not going to be able to answer your question directly as far as um, revenue or expenditures relative to marijuana. I would say that. Um, there were never um, large groups of people who were incarcerated purely for marijuana crimes in the first place. So you're not gonna see a change on that. Um, and we have really so far found very little new business as a result of uh, what transpired July 1st, uh, legalization. Um, I think you know, we as an organization, the Sheriff's Office, and really as a community are still kind of getting our 
our arms around all the implications of legalization. Uh, but, you know, so far, so good. Emily, you have member height. Yeah. Um, we have that big, pretty new jail. Um, are we releasing people because of staffing or because of space in the jail space? And will this levy help us with the staffing issue? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the great question. So our current jail was open in 1998. Um, in fact, we just paid off the bonded debt for that facility uh, a year ago. So your sheriff's office is debt free in case somebody that I was posed with that terrific question a couple of weeks ago and loved that question in part because I didn't know the answer, so it made me better. Um, we are releasing inmates um, early because of a lack of bed space. So we have 572 beds. Uh, we are at or near capacity all the time. And uh, that is not a result of trying as hard as we can to be efficient. We have, a, for example, an early case resolution program that is a partnership, talk about collaboration again, between the Sheriff's Office, the Public Defender's Office, and the District Attorney's Office, and parole and probation, and our jail staff about 30-some percent of all the criminal cases that Mr. Herman uh, prosecutes are handled with early case resolution. So somebody might come in with a minor drug charge or a theft charge and have the opportunity the very next morning to have their case uh, to, to dispose of, basically, and agree to, to an outcome. And that saves enormous bed days in our jail. We have a very successful drug court. Uh, we have a mental health court. They save thousands of bed days uh, a year and economize the very uh, limited number of hard beds that we have available in this county for a county of almost 600,000 folks. So we're working hard to be as economical as we can, uh, but the, the fact of the matter is we have insufficient space and, and sooner or later, I don't really know how long, we're gonna have to talk seriously about adding capacity, particularly for growing at the rate we are today, you know, for the next five or 10 years. And if I can add, again, being around here forever, um, back in the uh, mid to late uh, 2000, year 2000, uh, we had a consultant that came in and projected when we would need to build a new jail or at least build, add a new pod onto the, onto the jail. And, and I believe that was 2012. We were going to be way out of control. And so I, as the sheriff mentioned, we've, we've, we're trying to do everything we can keeping the public safe to uh, manage that. So this will, the, this funding will keep us at our present state. Chris, Chris Leslie, former member. Uh, the subject of terrorists and some likely targets in Washington County, are you sheriff or uh, prosecution? able to uh, identify any sources or, and work, how are you working on the terrorism and the threat of? Thank, thank you, Chris. Uh, great question. So uh, going back to our partners that we have working across the public safety spectrum, uh, one of those partners uh, is the FBI. And you probably know the Federal Bureau of Investigation has a joint terrorism task force that works downtown Portland, and uh, they are monitoring um, uh, kind of a terrorist threat across this uh, uh, greater Portland metro region and across our whole state. And uh, we have an investigator assigned full time to the task force. Um, I have the uh, privilege of chatting with uh, the, the FBI's uh, special agent in charge of all of their agents in Oregon. And uh, that is a, uh, a resource that I think is very well invested downtown. Um, if we have a question about whether it's a sovereign citizen or perhaps domestic uh, terrorism concern, we, we know from history that the local officers, the local deputies are gonna come across information that is, is, gonna, is gonna break something wide open. It's unlikely to be a, 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 as good as they are federal officers, it's gonna be local knowledge. So the more local knowledge we can bring to bear uh, on that on that threat and just assessing how serious it is or not, uh, the better and more safe uh, we're going to be. 
variable gain for a member. Uh, the, the term drug court and mental health court, how does that actually work? I can answer that. Um, it's uh, kind of counterintuitive to those that uh, those lawyers that work in the justice system that uh, talk about the adversarial process. Um, and uh, drug court, for example, um, is uh, in Washington County, it takes um, persons who are what we call high-end property offenders. So basically, they have committed property crimes as opposed to personally assaulted crimes. Um, theft, embezzlement, uh, what have you, car thefts. Um, and, uh, and so based upon their conduct and their history, they're looking, most all of them, at a significant prison sentence. Uh, they're screened, they, if they have a drug problem uh, of significance, um, they can come into the drug court, they can choose not to. Some, some look at it and say, this is too tough, and they, they don't want to do it. Um, but others come in, um, and uh, it's an intensive program, it's, it's a whole program that I could talk about it, but 18 months uh, is a minimum before someone can graduate through drug court. They make weekly court appearances, they're involved in uh, counseling, um, um, your analysis is random your analysis. They have to get employed, they have to pay restitution back to their victims. I think the drug court graduates have paid in excess, uh, I know in excess of $100,000 back to victims. We've had 166 graduates. Um, and so the whole concept is to, um, under a tight thumb, is basically to give um, folks the opportunity, the options, um, the scrutiny, keep the public safe, reunite them with their families, and uh, get them drug free. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of clean and sober housing. Mental health court is a little different. It takes people on probation with mental health issues. Um, but again, it's, it's uh, to try to get them um, uh, focused on services and get them to services um, with the court's supervision, keeping the public safe, but also uh, hopefully getting them out of the criminal justice system. Hi, uh, Phil Nelson, forum member. The question is probably not very directly related to the levy, but I'm wondering about reading in the paper uh, from time to time about charging juveniles as adults. And um, when uh, I was a kid, you know, the idea of the juvenile justice system was to keep kids out of trouble and to uh, have pretty aggressive juvenile services offices around the state, and I'm just wondering what the, the role of the charging of a juvenile as an adult is these days, and if, if that's uh, producing any particular effects, if it's going on. Thank you. I can answer that. The voters a couple times uh, passed a levy called Measure 11, which um, identified um, serious felony cases in which a 15-year-old 15, 16, or 17 year old can be charged in, in adult court. And so it, it, is, it is going on, it does occur. Um, uh, the legislature added, uh, I forgot the number, but they've added about 20 other charges uh, over time to the um, their kind of variations of sexual assault charges and so forth, they've added it. Um, it's a, it's a uh, um, when you deal with the most serious and um, significant cases we have, you'll find those individuals, um, you know, in that process um, where they're actually they can be and typically are charged uh, as as adults. Um, one thing that's not typically well known is um, they, um, if if convicted and incarcerated, they go to the same uh, Oregon Youth Authority facility that they would as as someone coming from the juvenile court. And uh, they can stay there until they're 25 years of age, so they're not housed in the adult facilities unless um, uh, their conduct in the institution is such that um, um, they basically, quote, earn, them, earn their way there because they're uh, maybe such a threat to the, to the other juveniles involved. Kind of an ongoing debate, but um, I, can, I can tell you about some of the mo more serious cases we've had in Washington County, and those are typically uh, you know, handled in that. 
Jim Cape, four member. Sorry to ask a second question, but you were speaking about Washington County's future. Do you believe in the 2020s, Washington County should have a second jail in the Beaverton, the lower area, or should the Hillsborough jail be enlarged? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, from what little analysis that we've done, planning to grow capacity in our jail makes it clear that the most economical way to do uh, to add jail beds would be to to add on to the current facility. Um, and so, from just a construction standpoint, that's the least costly way to do it. And from a justice system standpoint, you know the jail needs to be co-located or very nearby the courts, uh, the circuit courts. Um, and it helps to be nearby the sheriff's office because we do all the transporting of the inmates to court, from court, and to other jurisdictions and back. So that's probably how I would lean on that question. Thanks. I just got permission from our president. I'm not a forum member anymore, but you guys are going to let me ask a question. Just Thank this you. once. Just this once. <laughs> Eric Squires, executive director. My question following the presentation, forgive me if I missed the slide, is even though this is a levy renewal, property taxes are fungible and variable. Could you each tell me what potential increases to your budgets that you may see if this levy successfully passes? For my budget, I think overall would be, um, um, as I understand the numbers, it's about a three to four percent increase over the five years of the levy, and that's that's as a result of the increase in assessments, assessed values of homes, as well as the um, um, the growth in Washington County. Would that be per year? So that would be three or four percent cumulative per year. No, it's over five years. It's so it's less than one percent per year. Uh, I'm going to have to check the numbers on that. The, 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 it's, I'm not trying to it's, no, no, no. It's about three. It's about three to uh, four percent um, per year. Okay. Um, and so, um, and in terms of my office, it's um, over the course of five years, it's five positions. I believe it's the total. It would, would increase. <clears throat> it would pay for five additional <clears throat> positions, which could be staff victims' assistance or, or prosecutors. That's the projection. Wonderful, thank you. Um, we're really fortunate to be in a position we are economically. You know, we're, we're, the economy is gaining some steam, so assessed values are going up, and that's going to increase revenue from the levy should it continue. Um, but from the sheriff's office, that increase annually is going to be about 3 to 4%, um, unless there is some compelling public safety need that we need to meet, uh, you know, mental health response team is a discussion that we have every year whether to we can afford to grow it more than it, uh, it is currently in existence. And so that might mean a request to the budget committee for something in, in, in higher than that. But just going through history, two, three, four percent has not uh, been higher than that on an annual uh, basis. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems as though we've exhausted the questions, uh, except we have one more coming, and while that question is on its way, let me take a moment to assure you that the only reason you're not hearing people standing up here screening against this levy is because there is no organized opposition against this levy. I'm not naive enough to think that that means it's just going to pass, but this organization is committed to doing its best to present both sides. We couldn't find another side. Just thought I would share that. Chris, the mic is yours. Thank you. Chris, Leslie, form member. Again, uh, Mr. Herman, you said you would be adding three to five new staff members. What are you expecting the population growth to be for the county? And wouldn't that uh, help pay for the present? Um, Levy. So if I, um, well, first of all, in terms of the population growth, um, I just think it's going to dramatically increase. I, I remember, uh, I remember um, not.
probably 15 years ago, Portland State did a study, and I think we're about 100,000 or 150,000 higher than uh, than they projected. So, and, and that was, you know, I, I don't know. I just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just stunned. I, I have to check my in my head the numbers that I've heard from our uh, board chair, um, the commission. But he said it again the other day. So, I, uh, 25, I think it's 25 to 26 new. Uh, people coming into Washington County each day, uh, new residents, not just driving through, but new residents. <laughs> so, um, so in that respect, um, and so then, so the next part of your question is, do do we need? I'm I'm not sure. If I understand that. Do you need to raise the rate when you have more people paying taxes, so you would be able to pay for your new staff members? Got it. Well, um, I. I guess the answer is the, the the rate is the same that it's been since 2000. So this is maintaining this is maintaining that rate. I thought it was increase. No, I'm no, sorry. It, no, that's all right. It's a it's so it's a renewal of the same rate um, uh, since the year 2000. That's good information. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me take just two moments to speak about two things. The first thing is obvious. I want to thank these two gentlemen for their kind and thorough presentation. I appreciate both of you being here. Thank you very much. And then I just want to give you a question to think of before we talk about next week. Has anybody ever heard of these two words together in this order? Awesome, Beaverton? Anybody familiar with that? Okay, you might hear about it a little bit more later. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, same time, same station, you will be having a similar replay, but we'll be talking about the library levy and the director of the Washington County Library System will be with us next Monday at noon. Thank you very much for being here. We'll see you then. Take care.